Welcome to Two Wheels and Happy New Year to all of you and I hope all of your celebration hangovers have cleared up by now. Can't, Speaking uh, of which, look Can't at... you just be a bit quieter, mate? For oh, goodness sake. Oh, it's there. Have you been it's here it... all the time? It's yeah, I'm waiting for the January sale. <laughs> You're in the wrong place. Good mate. Lord. <laughs> Dearly <laughs> me. Well, what we're going to do is look forward and give you a few little tastes of the kind of things that you can look forward to in the forthcoming year on Two Wheels. Yes, you know, the rallies and the bike shows and the big gatherings. Yeah. You know, like there's some big events. There's the Island Man of course and there's a BMF rally uh, the National Bike Show there's all sorts but but there's you know they're, they're the same every year but obviously fresh and sharper and more interesting this year the same but different yeah I suppose right? you could say that couldn't you <laughs> yeah and of course there's all the little ones as well like this It's not just events in this country that we're Paul, looking at as Paul, well. Paul, Paul, what, Paul, will this set long, right? Because I'm parched. It's so right. thirsty, you won't believe it. Got another drink already. For dehydration <laughs> setting in. Right. right, let me just explain All right. this. 
we will be covering events throughout Europe. We'll be covering motorcycle touring. It's very, very, very popular. Perhaps even going to places like this with a nice Mediterranean feel about them. So here's some pictures just to whet your appetite. Speaking of which. Oh, know, wet, oh, what, wet, wet me whistle, Come man. On. Come on. I'll treat you. When it comes to bikes, though, I saw more big bikes than small. But the bike shops I visited certainly had a lot of 400s. Like this 400 CX500, if you see what I mean. This nice 400 Kawasaki Balius and a neat V-twin Yamaha. But some bikes were not all they seemed. This Honda Magda is a 50 and knee high to a grasshopper. There were also some other really neat mini bikes like this 200 Yamaha trellis frame beauty and this Honda NSR 50. Yes, 50cc. Some schoolgirls though seemed to think that mini bikes were not for me. Alright, how about a Julio or Julio in Spanish scooter? No? Well, what about this immaculate refurbished 84 750 Katana at 399,000 yen? That's roughly 2,000 pounds. Plenty to choose from, whatever your taste, as these two found out on a ZZR 1100. Who's been polishing his helmet then? One thing that any biker mustn't miss in Tokyo is Corins. No, I'm not being funny. Not Collins, Corins. This is the epicenter for bikers, if not for earthquakes. One street is completely occupied by this outfit, who are so protective of their prices that no filming is allowed either in or outside their shops. I wanted to bring you a shot of the no camera sign, but wasn't even allowed that. All I got was some Brit dealers looking for bargains. From bandanas to bikes, Corins had everything. But it seems a quick fit spare service could also be in demand. In fact, it gives curb crawling a whole new meaning. But this guy wasn't alone in his perfectly legal curbside activities. Others tinkered and improvised too. Sorry mate, I don't know where it goes either. Andorra isn't just about trail biking, there's a massive array of road bits and pieces, more accessory shops than I've ever seen in one place. And the great thing is, it's bloody cheap. There must have been about 20 bike shops along the main street alone, every possible accessory you could ever imagine. I asked one of the local managers why there were so many bike shops. Andorra is a tax-free principality and we get bikers from all over the world, for example Australia, for, uh, a lot of riders from England and you can get uh, good accessories here and approximately half price uh, that of the rest of the Europe. Yes, half price the rest of Europe. Half price, I said. Can you believe that? During this coming year, we're going to visit various different factories abroad. Because you're sending me abroad, aren't you, for the change? I'm going to let you go out on your own. Yeah, can't wait. I'm not going to let you go to any bike factories, though. And why is that, then? I'm not you on a bike. Oh, thanks very oh, much. Jesus. All right, then. Well, we're going to visit factories that produce products. Products in the way of accessories, because that's my bit on the programme. We've got the boots and the way they develop the clothing that you wear, the helmets on your head. Not just development, the actual production. Everything that goes on before it comes to the shop package for you to buy. Waterproofs. Waterproofs, yeah, we need it with this. There's a lot of water here. There isn't there. I need a wee now. I wonder why you're <laughs> jobbering around. <laughs> do what do you mean you need a wee? I do need a wee. I need oh, to go. Desperately. Absolutely. All right, well, let me just tell you a little bit more then and just keep the camera rolling for no, a while. Keep, no, right, let's cut. Where? Well, well, you soft, go. Adam. <laughs> so enough of the history lesson from Paul about Fraser. Let's get on to the real stuff. We've come to Glasgow. In fact, we're just a little bit outside Glasgow. We've been here hours, not even seen Billy Connolly once. And I'm going to show you all about this stuff. These brackets and bolts and tubes and valves and, oh, everything you can think of. All sorts of bits and pieces to produce and assemble such as this. What's this, you might ask? A lubricating device. And that's how it ends up in the shops, just like you buy it. Wayne, bienvenue à la <laughs> I'm going to impress you now, <laughs> because I've been practicing French now for the last four weeks. <clears throat> Hello, Andy, how are you? <laughs> Thank you. Would you please take me around the factory? Sure, Wayne, I'd be delighted. Follow me. Pizza delivery bike? Nah. A rocking bike, rather than a rocking horse? Nah. A turntable. Very, very simple turntable. If you've got a main stand on your machine and it balances nicely like that, 
you can turn your bike around in your garage or your shed or anywhere you want. So if you've got confined space at home and you can't move the bike around, because it is a problem with some of these big beasties, if you're short like I am, uh, you want to move it around, just stick it on the main stand, stick it on this turntable and spin it around. Very simple device, maintenance free, no ball bearings or anything like that to worry about inside. And all for the price of 66 quid here at the bike show. I think good value for money and a very innovative and clever idea. Which, with its workforce of just 12 people, is at one of only a handful of places still making boots in the traditional way. Right, enough of the history lesson, Paul. We're not interested, are we? No, we're interested in the real thing. We're actually here to find out how that lot of paper that are all cut up in different shapes, which produces that stitched up bits of leather, can end up looking like that, a motorcycle boot. Well, we're in just the right place for it because below me is the factory floor. So, Paul, it's over to you. So do you want to know what that strange looking thing is there in front of that lens? Well, it's one of these. This strange looking thing is a k air filter. Every bike usually has an air filter. There's a good reason for having an air filter. It's to filter the air. I know my stuff, mate. And k are manufacturers of air filters. In fact, they're probably the world's leaders. They know just about everything there has to be known about air filters. So I've come to k &N. Now, k &N have a an exotic location, I think somewhere in California. But oh no, where do we end up? Warrington. Mm -hmm. And who do I end up talking to? Somebody who's two foot taller than I. It does disappoint me that I get these jobs talking to tall people. I'm joined by Nick O'Kane, who's the ace at K&N. Knows mm -hmm. everything. So don't deny any knowledge now. I want to know everything, the ins and outs, the pros and cons okay. of air filtration. Week in and week out, on the two wheels desk, there are mountains and mountains of correspondence from you out there, reference mechanicking. Because not everybody knows how to work on the bike. OK, well, fair enough. So we've addressed the problem because a man to guide you is my uncle Jeff, and he's going to do his little workshop bit and explain how to fix and repair your bike. But then again, if everything doesn't go to plan, you could always hail a taxi, if there was one. Taxi! <laughs> <laughs> Where's a taxi when you need one? <laughs> Here is the rear brake, rear brake um, reservoir with the How fluid in it. How often should you be checking your, your brake fluid level? You should keep a regular eye on it. I mean, I think the handbook, it's a good point, we'll have to come to handbook mm. later on. The handbook would probably say check it um, weekly, but I keep an eye on it about sort of monthly. Mm -hmm. That may look low, but in fact it's right between the two, the high and low level marks. If you look over the other side, Diane, there's a couple of marks there. So yep. just engraved on the plastic, mm -hmm, yeah. upper and lower levels. This little rubber diaphragm in the top here, because hydraulic oil is hygroscopic, it absorbs moisture. Good word. It is a good word, it's a big word, but I said it right. And um, mm -hmm. that diaphragm fits in there to keep as much air out as possible right. because it allows to move up and down with the fluid because as your brake pads wear, that fluid level goes down. Right. And then you put new brake pads in, pushes the level back up. Right. So that's the rear one. The other thing, while we're on discs, um, you've heard of fully floating discs and floating discs and all yeah. the rest of it? Well, this is a semi-floating disc. Mm -hmm. in that, that is the central carrier and this is the disc itself. And these little steel buttons in between, they lock the two together, but they allow the disc to actually float slightly against the carrier, just in case there's any distortion. Right. And there's um, the disc on the Duke over here is... Now that's something completely different to say. Now these are fully floating discs on the Ducati. Hear that rattling? Yeah. That's not rattling because they're worn out. They're supposed to be like that. They do float. Same construction as you can see with these buttons, but it allows them to centre nicely between the pads. Great. So that's fully floating, that's semi-floating. Well, I hope all of this is whetting your appetite for the forthcoming season of uh, delights that we've got for you on two wheels. And we've got even more to show you after the break. But uh, it's your... <coughs> How do you wait that out? Come on, no, I keep them buying them. No, you little I mean, liar. You you're know. always looking no, right. and you're, you're out of order. No, out of order. I'm not getting them again. I don't think you should. No, you can. Now, regular viewers will know that we do lots and lots of motorcycle tests, loads of bike tests, every different shape, size, make and model you can possibly think of. What we will be doing in the future on two wheels is more and more group tests, head to head. Yes, group, you, you, group. Sex? Group, group tests. Tests? Group tests we'll be well, doing. Well, I thought we were under this blue light. I thought we were doing a blue movie no, or something. No, no, it's group tests. We'll be doing more and more bikes together, bike head to heads. Now, come on, Head? Man. What's this head no. thing you're on about? 
What a dilemma. Both brilliant bikes, both with all the toys, Brembo brakes, fully adjustable suspension front and rear, very similar specs in so many ways. It's all down to you. For me, it's simply down to lust, and for that, it's got to be the Duke. Impractical, temperamental, excitable, isn't that the very essence of being Italian? On the other hand, if you're more practical, you could save yourself two grand on a 996 by Posto at 11750 and have a very satisfying melee for 9699. Both machines handle superbly well. They're not out and out sports bikes, but they're as happy on the racetrack as they are tootling through a quiet country village. A quick glance over the spec sheets shows just how little there is between them. The Blackbird claims 164 brake horsepower, while the Hayabusa says 175. The Honda has a 5mm longer wheelbase and its seat is 5mm higher than the Suzuki. The seating arrangements are slightly different. The Blackbird has a one-piece dual seat, whereas the Hayabusa employs a two-piece unit with the option of removing the pillion pad and fitting a rear cowling to give it a racing style look. The Honda weighs in at 223 kilos and despite possibly looking heavier, the Suzuki undercuts this by eight kilos, tipping the scales at 215. It's all very, very close. On the road prices are just a few pounds apart. The Hayabusa or the new fuel injected Blackbird can be put on the road for less than £8,000. So do you go for the tried and tested Honda Blackbird with its classy looks and a top speed of around 180 miles an hour? Or do you dare to be different and choose the Hayabusa with its unique styling and 200 miles an hour top speed? It's a tough choice. Honda's proven track record or Suzuki's fastest production bike in the world. Either way, you won't be disappointed. Maybe this coming year you've decided to keep the bike you've already got and not change it for a nice new one and you're going to kick yourself out with a whole load of new gear. Well Paul's given me some gear to show you for the future. Excuse me mate, how's things with you then, alright? Not got a lot to say for himself has he? And this is a Kevlar type jacket. The whole thing is produced out of Shula material, this stretchy stuff that is extraordinary abrasive resilient. With a few trimmings on as well to make it look smart. Clever stuff, very protective, no leather for those of you who don't wish to wear leather. Now this is Nevis Marketing Stand and they do a several different products from all around the world. But this is the one I want to bring to your attention. A simple plain jacket you might say. No, not really. It's a mixture of textiles and very very high technical textiles as well very abrasive resilient very windproof and waterproof and in addition to that we've got leather we've got leather on the shoulders and on the elbows so those of you who are skeptical about textile material being as abrasive as resilient as you would like they've addressed the problem haven't they and that jacket there you can buy with a lot of technical features and i just want to point this out as well that'll definitely keep you warm in the winter how you fall lining and that'll cost you around 230 quid but don't bother asking your dealer yet because it will not be available to January now naturally they're going to do a pair of trousers to match and this is they exactly the same sort of features some high-tech materials and textiles with leather on the knee and leather on the butt for those again who are a bit skeptical about the abrasive resilience of textile materials Obviously one of the most popular things on two wheels are the bike tests themselves, but not everybody, not all of you, can afford the latest fancy technology. It's out of many people's reach. So we'll be catering for you in the future as well. We'll be looking at second-hand buys, what to look for, where to go, how to find yourself a decent bargain. Also some pretty fancy bikes, some one-off specials and some very nice custom machines. So, excuse me, I've got to go and finish my meal.
you know some of my favourite bits are the outtakes, the bits where we have a bit of a laugh, sometimes purposely, sometimes not everything goes to plan. In fact, only last week when I was in my Santa's outfit, well, a few things went wrong then. Do you want to have a look? We'll take a look at this then. Oh, yeah! Well, that's it for this edition of Two Wheels. Hope you've enjoyed that little look back. But we'll be back next year, uh, next week, next week, <laughs> next year. I'm going to say year and week. <laughs> <laughs> it's a new language. We'll be still off on our week. <laughs> shut up, on a phone. Right, shut up now. You're all in. Well, that leaves just one member of our team to introduce this young man here, sat next to me. I use the term young very loosely. Young Wayne Kershaw here, Santa for the day. Um, oh, you see. <laughs> Right, Paul, can you go and get the mics? Right. <laughs> 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 Sorry, was I, was I talking when you were interrupting them? <laughs> right, we'll go again. Week in and week out, on the two wheels office desk, there is masses of correspondence from you out there asking about spanner work mechanicking and so on. Well, in the future on the programme, we're going to bring you... Bring you... <laughs> well, that's all we've got time to show you this week. Well, that's just a very, very small sample of the type of things that we've got lined up in the future for you on two wheels. And next week on Two Wheels, we're going to show you some marking systems, security marking systems that you put on your bike, including a new revolutionary one. Mm. But I would like to be the first to wish you a happy and prosperous Easter. Easter. <laughs> yeah. Come, Come on, on, get them in, mate. It's not my round now. I believe it is. Not again. I'm you're not always arguing. You're a right tight one, aren't you, eh? Get, hey, get your wallet out, for goodness <laughs> sake.